Hi there, Tanya here. I'm back in the garden and I know a lot of you have asked me about weeds, specifically invasive weeds. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Three invasive weeds that are very commonly found in gardens. So let's do something about it. Come on over with me because I'd like to introduce you to something special. Wait a minute, I have to get through these weeds. <laughs> this is, she is a horticulturalist. She is also a master gardener. She grew up in a gardener family. This is Alexis Yanaki, my younger sister, and she's gonna help us out. Thank you for coming on, Lexi. You're welcome. Okay, so first of all, we hear the word weeds. I think we know what weeds are, but what's mm. the difference between a regular weed and an invasive weed? Okay, I might just jump back a little bit and say a weed really is a plant growing where we don't want to grow it, because what we might consider a weed here might not be a weed somewhere else. Um, but an invasive weed, oh my gosh. Well, let's take a look at a good example we have here. Here we've got something called creeping bellflower. And it looks like a pretty benign plant just to look at it. It's nothing special about it. But what I would say creates an invasive weed is something that will grow at the expense of other plants. And as soon as a plant becomes a thug, it's kind of like people. I'm not too fond of them. Yeah, so I'm going to take a look at this. Um, when I dig it out, I'm, I did a little digging in advance, you'll see quite an extensive root system here. This grows from, I, I often call them, they almost look like a carrot. This is a small young plant, but when you get a mature one, you'll get a large tap root with many, many smaller roots growing off it. And unless you get every single bit of this plant, it will regrow. So okay. that is with what I would say is an invasive plant. So that's a huge deal because when I'm working with Lexi, uh, who's a professional in a garden, she's behind me saying, no, you don't pull these weeds out. You have to use the shovel to dig them out. So that's a, a huge point of difference right there. Now, unfortunately, the creeping bellflower that we have here doesn't have the flower on it because it's actually pretty. And Lexi, I've seen it growing in a lot of people's gardens. Mm. No, because people look at the flower and think, oh, that is pretty. And it is. It truly is. It's a pretty purple flower. But again, it will go to seed and regenerate and regenerate and it will grow and choke out other plants. And that's kind of what's happened in this patch right here. So mm. you will, you'll see quite a bit of it and it has the underground root system that just keeps spreading. And if you look quite closely, it's throughout this garden. So you really have to dig and dig deep to okay. remove this yeah, plant. Yeah, so, and, it, and it can take years. Okay, yeah. so number one, invasive weed we're talking about right now is creeping bellflower this is what it looks like can we do a we'll show you a close-up of the leaf as well mm. it does get a stalk with pretty purple bell flowers you do not want this in your garden it will take over so number one is creeping bellflower so number two in our invasive species in gardening is one we chose because they're sold it's actually sold in nurseries isn't it? it is you'll probably see this in a garden center or big box stores and the thing that frustrates a lot of people that know better is that this is very invasive and shouldn't be sold at all. Um, it's called minka vine. And you'll see, I've dug up a clump of it here. It has a fairly nondescript root system, but what makes it invasive and problematic in this city and other cities, of course, is that you'll see these long stems. Wherever the stem hits the ground, you'll see it will root. So this plant, we call it jumping. So it can jump from one area to another and it invades our natural areas and again, grows at the expense of other plants. So this is a definite no-no to plant. Okay, so periwinkle, uh, and some of you might be surprised by that because it, again, it gets a really pretty flower on it, doesn't it? Does it does in the spring and uh, people will say, oh, it's a great ground cover, it fills the space. It's just that it can jump and it can yes. get where it shouldn't go. Oh. And once you have it, it's very difficult to remove. It really anchors itself down. So I would not okay. recommend this place. There's a lot, this particular plant, there's a lot of other uh, native species that you could plant instead. Can I comment on that just before we move on to number three? So again, working professionally with Alexis and Co, uh, this is one, there's a lot of foul words that come out when we're trying to dig this one out. And it's like, okay, can you work on that? It's like, ooh. It's not fun, so get it out. Okay, moving on. Okay, so number three in our invasive species in gardening is gout weed. Mm -hmm. 
This particular one is a variegated oh, gout leaf. Okay. And the variegated gout leaf, again, is an attractive plant sold at garden centers without a warning. Um, it does come in a solid green form, which is even harder to remove and eradicate. In fact, when I bought my house, this was covering my front lawn, and I said to my husband, I don't want to buy that house based oh. on that. <laughs> but I have since gotten rid of it and all is well. So you'll see here, this also has these underground uh, root system and you see how it's popping up further down the line. So it can grow feet and feet from the mother plant and completely take over a garden. So question, question mm -hmm. for who? If my neighbor has it, it could pop up where I am. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a bit of a jumper as well. So uh, again, it's an aggressive plant. It can grow at the expense of other plants. It's a thug and I don't want it. So all the plants that Alexis is talking about will, can hurt your other plants. That's the whole point. They can. They are so aggressive, they'll crowd out. That's usually what happens. They'll crowd out other plants. And um, well, look at this hosta here, especially in a garden that doesn't get a lot of attention just because of you know lifestyle or, or whatever, and you want to kind of leave your garden for a while. We're all busy. Yes. Yeah, that's life. And this will take over in a blink of an eye. You will turn around and it will have covered it up your plant. So. so just while we're down here, how do I get, I know some people are going to say, well, can I go to the aisle with chemicals and can I get that can that has the skull and crossbones and spray everything? Like, how do I get rid of these? We never recommend to use chemicals. Uh, the best way to get rid of these guys is through good old fashioned elbow grease and that's digging them out. So digging them out. Mm -hmm. So remember, if you watched my first video, one of the tools that's really good to have is a good shovel and that's probably the best way to get these out. Okay, so number, number three is gout leaf. Okay, so we're going to continue and add one more invasive species on our list of uh, gardening invasive weeds and this is one that is actually up quite a level from the other weeds that we've been talking about. This is Japanese knotweed lexi. Yeah, so this was introduced from Asia uh, as an ornamental and it has taken off in a very negative way. Um, if you want to come in and take a look, uh, I can show you what sort of makes it distinctive. If I turn the plant around here, I just flipped off a branch. You'll see it's got a bit of a zigzag pattern to how it grows and at each zig is where a leaf node is formed. So it's got alternate leaves, heart-shaped leaves and a reddish stem. This typically blooms in August and that's when it's most distinctive uh, because otherwise it's a fairly nondescript plant. Most people would walk by it and not know what it is. But I think a uh, key characteristic is how it can grow with next to no soil. You'll see here, here's one growing out of, literally, out of the corner of the brick. That's crazy, isn't it? When you think it's literally growing out of the cement. And if you live in the UK, you'll know that this plant really affects the housing prices there. Um, people will not buy a house if this plant is growing because it has done a lot of damage to uh, the integrity of a home. So it actually can affect the foundation Absolutely. of your garage, of your home. So we're in a back alleyway right now, and I had noticed that there's Japanese knotweed growing, so I wanted Lexi to address it for all of you. Okay, so what do we do? It's a tough one. It's a tough one to remove. Um, and I have removed it successfully myself, but it's one that if you do not get the entire rhizome, which is the underground root system, it can reproduce from something the size of almost a baby fingernail and regenerate. And the plant will pop up maybe 30 feet from the mother plant. So it requires a lot of work. So another method would be putting a tarp over it and uh, really depriving it of light and its method of photosynthesis. It can be treated with a herbicide. That would be something I'd recommend uh, a professional to do. They have a system of treating this. And it's not something that, that will happen in one go. It can take several treatments and up to three years to eradicate. So just to reiterate with this one, if you're just tuning in, yes, it's a weed, but it can actually affect the foundation of a garage or a house. That was interesting what you said about the UK. Mm -hmm. They had a tremendous problem there and it literally has to be excavated with back hose and um, it's, it's done a lot of damage. And 
the way I remember it, because I'm not a horticulturalist like Lexi, is that zigzaggy stem. So keep that in mind and go take a look and make sure you don't have Japanese knotweed because this is definitely one that you don't want. And I will say there are other native plants that have the zigzag pattern, so that's not, it's only it's not the only telltale. But that is one that will help. You'll see the alternate leaf patterns, the red stem, and if you cut into the rhizome, it's got a, a reddish tinge to it, a reddish tinge. Mm. Okay, well, a lot to think about with invasive species, and I hope that you learned something through this video. I know I sure did. It's all about happy gardening. Lexi, thank you very much You're for welcome. coming on with us. And hopefully Lexi will join us for more videos as we find the beauty in every day.